Bryce Ford Wheaton, wide receiver, West Virginia University. I'm a dog. Thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I just kind of want to start. What what made you fall in love with the sport of football? Uh, football's kind of always been something that's in, involved in my family. My uh, grandfather played at West Virginia University, and so did my uncle too. So um, from a young age, I was kind of like always around football and like the West Virginia facilities and things like that. So I kind of fell in love with it like early. Did did you lean on those individuals as kind of like? your inspiration for, you know, how you wanted to play football or how you wanted to progress in your career? Yeah, um, I just thought it was like cool, um, just like playing D1 football. So I always knew like I kind of wanted to go to West Virginia just because of my uh, family. But um, yeah, so once I got the opportunity to do it, it was just like a, a no brainer really. And so what, what positions did they play? Were they wide receivers as well or what'd they play? They uh, both played running back. Running back, okay. Yeah. So what, what got you to wide receiver instead of, you know, did you want to be a running back too, or did you kind of want to take your own path? Uh, I played running back for like the first few years of my like football career, like in like little league and things like that. But I kind of like grew like tall and kind of like lean. So I knew that a uh, receiver is like better, better fitted for me. Is there anybody that just kind of helps motivate you or influence you to be a better player or a better person? Whether it's a coach or a family member that you kind of rely on. Um, Yeah. I'll probably say like, my mom for sure just because like she always like motivates me and uh kind of challenges me to like keep the standard of like our family high like in college i knew that i couldn't really do uh everything that everybody else was just because of my family um like legacy so in order like not to like dishonor that i kind of had to live like by a different standard in college because i kind of felt like there was more eyes on me than everybody else so my mom has definitely like developed me into a better man and uh also like a better football player too Okay, let's switch to the field now. You're, let's say you are, uh, you're getting ready for a game. You're trying to study your opponent. You're trying to study what they're going to do for you. Walk us through kind of what your personal process, not necessarily what the team process is, but your personal process is for, you know, knowing what you're going to do on a game week. Um, well, in terms of like scouting and things like that, I watched like a whole bunch of film. And uh, this year I had uh, online classes. So I was able to be around the facility a lot more. So I'll be watching film with uh, like my coaches and my quarterback and things like that. But um, one of the main things I do in terms of like scouting is I'll go look up like past games they played in and I'll look at to see if the opposing receivers had like good games or which ones had a good game. So I know what game to watch. And then I know, um, you know, like what works and I kind of see what works. And um, yes, yeah, so that's one of the main things I do. And then in terms of like my, my week, um, before the game, I just always get like a whole bunch of recovery in. Uh, my strength coach puts me through like a lot of like little extra work, things like to keep me like fine tuned and things like that. When you watch those games and you see those other receivers do stuff, do you do you try and take stuff from their game, try and maximize the the opportunities that you have? Yeah, I always take stuff from like everybody else that I watch, whether it be like an NFL receiver, like with a release or um, just seeing, like I said, those, those other college guys that had success against those DBs. Um, I'll take whatever works so I can kind of judge based off um, the technique and things like that because the technique doesn't change. So I'll um, usually just incorporate that into like my game for that week. Are there any specific players you try to model a lot of your game after or that you always want to go back and see their film or anything like that? Um, in the league, I always watch uh, like Mike Williams. I kind of like to see what Mike Williams is doing because we're about the same exact size and um, he's had a lot of success in the league. So that's probably like the one person that I really uh, – really watch, but I, I watch a whole bunch of guys. Like Devontae Adams is another one just because of his release uh, and his separation, which is something I'm trying to work on in my game right now. So, you know, it all depends on the coverage you're facing, the team you're facing, as you're already saying, but what, what's your favorite route, your favorite route to run? Um, I kind of like a, like a little stutter and go, really. Uh, I kind of like just opening up my stride and seeing if a DB can really run with me. And then most of the time you're going to get them if they're in man coverage on a, on a little stutter. So. That kind of makes it a little bit easier and um, just kind of like an exciting play. 
So talking about a stutter and go, can you walk me through kind of this, is the process you're coming out of the huddle, you know, that's the route, you know, it's within the play that you're calling. What's your process from breaking the huddle to getting into the play. Just walk me through, you know, all everything that goes through your mind from the start to the catch, to the run, what you say afterwards, whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, if I'm coming out of the uh, huddle and I know that I have a stutter and go, um, first off, like the main thing is selling the first route. So if we've been running like a lot of hitches or like curls or anything like that, then he's kind of already going to be uh more like, more likely to try to jump that route. So it's, it's really like setting your other routes up to, to hit this one. And um, so I'll stutter probably like around like eight to 10 yards. I try to like look in, uh, saw my eyes to the to the quarterback. And then usually they try to grab if they if they bite that. So I always be prepared to knock down somebody's hands. And then um, I dig out, I try to put my head down and just really open up my stride for at least three steps. And then uh, usually by the time I do that, I look up and the ball's in the air already, so. Balls, balls in the air. You look back, you see it. What, what's going through your mind is that balls in the air. Uh, first, I'm trying to judge it to see if it's going to be like over the shoulder, like leading me downfield, or if I'm going to have to try to go up and get it. But um, like what goes into my mind really just like I know I have to come down with that ball. So yeah, that's that's the thing. Okay, so you come off the field. Opposing coach gets up to the podium. What do you want that opposing coach saying about you? What's the thing you want to hear out of their mouth that makes you go, "Yeah, I had a good game today." Um. I like to hear when coaches say, or I would like to hear them say, he's a dog. Uh, he does everything for them. Uh, he's just like relentless. They're like one of those players that you hate playing against, things like that. So I like to hear that. So at the end of the game, you're playing your biggest rival and you catch this game winning touchdown pass. It's yours, it's you score it, you guys win the game. At home, crowd's going wild, all your fans are going crazy on the road opposing fans, rival fans, dead quiet while you and your teammates get to celebrate, which would you prefer? Um, I never had a game winning uh, touchdown at uh, at home, but I've had one uh, on the road before uh, against Kansas State. And that was a lot, like that was a lot of fun because they're a ranked team. We came in there, nobody thought we were gonna win. And uh, to catch one of those and the silence the whole crowd. And uh, it was just a whole lot of back and forth with the fans after that, so it was fun. All right, last question here about kind of your draft process. You're going to be going into this put yourself in draft night your phone rings you see that it's an nfl team yeah. you're finally going to be you know joining playing in the league what's going through your head who's there with you who you hugging first like describe what that night's going to be like uh yeah i've thought about this a lot uh recently but um for sure uh probably going to do it somewhere back in north carolina uh have my mom sitting right next to me uh my uncle um just like my real close immediate family, like my brother, my sister. Uh, I have a, a couple of friends there probably. And then I have my girl there too. Uh, my mom, definitely the first person I'm gonna hug though. Uh, hopefully I don't really, I don't have media there or anything. Hopefully I'm not crying and sobbing and stuff, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good night. Oh, thank you, Bryce. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it so much.